The whole idea came out of my own reflection and contemplation of my own life. You know, as an artist, but not just as an artist, I think just as a human being going through life, I uh, began to realize that, you know, we're never satisfied. And we're always dragging around these different fears, which are an unnatural way to be, but it's what we're, the way we are in the world. To understand this, it had to go beyond the mind and the senses to get to a, another level of understanding. So to me, it had to go to a soul level. Through the years, uh, I, I always remembered what drew me to art to begin with, which was uh, the great masterworks of Michelangelo and Leonardo da Vinci, and then later on the Dutch masters, the 17th century Spanish masters. So it was the old masters, and it was beauty and light, really, that I was attracted to. I've gotten to the point in my life where I want all the experience that I've had and all the knowledge I have to just be totally expressed on a canvas. This great idea of mine involves a pack of foxhounds as my theme. The hounds then were my vehicle of communication of, uh, between the conscious and the unconscious. They're symbolic of, of the archetypes that inform our lives as human beings. The actual theme of the whole piece is uh, it's a very mystical idea, which is all of life is connected and all is one. And it's told through uh, archetypes. And an archetype uh, actually is a um, primordial kind of uh, pattern. And it's the way the universe talks to us and uh, through archetypes, through these patterns. And it's not through logic, it's not through words. And we have to respond through uh, symbolic language. So the, the hounds are symbols of this idea that all of life is one, all of humanity is connected, and the landscape they inhabit is a, a, a metaphor for the field of time and space. I want to go back to the idea of what apocalypsis means, and it doesn't mean anything about doom and gloom, but it, it, uh, it's a Greek word. It actually means to uncover or to take the cover off. What we're doing is taking the cover off the realization that we are all connected. We are, are already eye of the same circle going to that same center point. I want to show the hounds in various attitudes, positions, poses, kind of acting out what these energies are and in a way that we can see it in ourselves. And I knew I had to go into an area of myself that maybe I wasn't so conscious of. I realized that there, there is a point where the um, field of time and eternity meet inside of us. And that's a point of transformation, but you have to allow yourself to get there. And the eternal moments are available to us all the time. I think if you put it in a whole other context, like dogs, which are hounds, then people may take a second look and wonder, what is that about? What I want to do with the hounds is to put them together in groups and to express these uh, archetypes that um, are all part of our lives, the seven deadly sins, the five senses, the four elements, and the three graces. For this, with the seven deadly sins, this is the place where we uh, confront our dark passions. We start to see the, the destructive authority each of these forces has over us. But the intention is to find a way to dismantle that or tra transcend it. The dark passions are fear-driven, they're ego-driven, they're greed-driven. And so all of our actions, our relationships of life are subjected to our connection to these forces. The, the four elements are known as the, in mystical terms, as the quatrain of the soul. And they're the earth, air, fire, and water. As an example, our earth nature within us relates to what is most dense, what, what is most slow to change or transform. And um, water would be symbolic of our moods because, you know, we think of our, their, our moods as either uh, rising, falling, or some days we're feeling rather turbulent, we're stormy, you know, and our, 
in our mood or we're calm. And here I, I have a series of hounds just splashing through the stream. Fire is seeing the light and it's a flash of insight. Air would be the, I would see the hounds as crying, as crying meaning they're howling. They're using the air, uh, they're from the belly coming through the lungs and it's, it's like speaking. We experience the world through our senses, of sight, smell, sound, taste, and touch. They're, they're an organ through which the self identifies with its experience. But we can't get too tied to the experience of the sense. So we, because what it ties us to is the external object of our attention. So perception, really at the soul level, does not come through the, the senses. You know, the soul level is more of a mystical connection to a deeper level of awareness. I think art has the, the power to transform people's consciousness, you know. It goes right to the heart of life and living and the experience of being alive.